Russia is pushing rapidly into the region with aims to control it before anyone else. Its military has built a modern base that's closer to the US state of Alaska than it is to Moscow. CNN's Frederick Pleitgen got rare access. Racing north across the frozen Arctic Sea on a Russian army chopper. The Russians are making a huge effort to upgrade their military infrastructure in the Arctic. Several of their bases are already fully operational. Right now, they're flying us to one of their most modern ones. They call this space Northern Clover. The Russian army has already deployed coastal defense rockets here and specialized Arctic anti-aircraft systems built to perform in the cold. This complex is adapted for much harsher weather conditions of the Arctic. It works in temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees. It's all part of Vladimir Putin's long-term strategy to dominate the Arctic. The space has a clear mission to defend and enable Russia's interests in the Arctic North. And as the ice here becomes weaker because of global warming, those economic interests are becoming more important. The Northern Clover base is in a strategic location in Russia's Arctic Far East. It seems remote until you look at the world from the top and see that this base is one of Russia's closest to U.S. territory. The base can house up to 250 soldiers. Aside from its weapons arsenal, it also has high-powered radars to make sure America and its allies don't come close. Russia is pouring major resources into its Arctic endeavor. It's the only country with a fleet of nuclear icebreakers to open up and control Arctic trade routes that could make trade between Asia and the West much faster and cheaper. And Russia is already tapping into natural resources in the Arctic like liquid natural gas, even deploying floating nuclear power stations to fuel its Arctic ambitions. Our base performs radar control, monitors the airspace, secures the Northern Sea route, and eliminates damage to the environment. The Trump administration seems woefully inequipped to counter Russia's Arctic endeavors. While Moscow is expanding and fortifying its position in this vital area, America and its allies lack even the same ice-breaking power of Russia's fleet. Well, Frederick Plekin joins me now from Moscow because it's interesting, isn't it, Frederick, that they invited you along knowing the U.S. would see your mm. reporting. Why do you think they did it? Yeah. Well, I think because this region is very important for them, and I think that they do want to make a statement that they take it uh, very seriously, and not only take it seriously militarily, but also take it seriously economically as well. They see this as a major zone of their strategic interest. And we talked about some of the things. They think that with global warming, a lot of these Arctic trade routes are going to be opening up, and that there's going to be a bonanza for Russia, because it's going to control those trade routes. Uh, as we mentioned, they're the only country that has nuclear icebreakers, and essentially what they want to do is they want to make these nuclear icebreakers the taxis of the north. They want to make sure that companies hire one of these icebreakers that leads their ships all the way to Asia, making it cheaper and a lot faster to bring routes that way. And obviously, a bonanza for Russia uh, with, uh, for instance, transit fees uh, going through that area. So certainly, they have identified this as a major zone uh, of interest that they have. At the same time, they say they want to defend that zone with these military bases. And if you look at the numbers, they're actually quite staggering. You have big bases like the one that we were at, which is really very much state-of-the-art, Max. And uh, the Russians have really poured a lot of resources into that. But in total, the Russians say that they've put in place more than 470 uh, pieces of military infrastructure in the Arctic region since 2012. So this is a real push, a strategic push, and certainly one that's carried by the top leadership of this country, Max. Okay, Fred, fascinating. Thank you very much indeed for bringing us that.